I hope our hearts and minds are open as we listen to the word. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Lee of New Heaven, New Earth. Pastors from all around the nation, greetings. It's nice to meet you. I wanted to introduce myself to all of you. That is what I had expected. And truly, I am grateful to have this time to meet all of you. At this time, I should probably begin with an introduction of myself. I myself had never attended a seminary, nor was I anointed by a pastor. I was simply born in the countryside and knew how to farm. My name, as you may all probably know very well, I am Man Hee Lee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Now, I used to work in the countryside. But one day, as I saw my grandfather praying out in the open field, a very large open field that is, I also started to pray to God as well. At that time, there was a large star, larger than me, that came and was about 7 meters above me. And I was so taken aback by this that I went into my father's room, and my father who was sleeping, I woke him up. I said, there's a star, there's a star. And so my father came out to see this, and he said, wow, that's a very large star. And he said, long ago, it said that if a large star like this appears, there is a great figure that appears in the country. And he said, there must be a great figure that is appearing in this country as well. The very next day, after I had seen this star, I was led by the star to go up to a tall mountain, and in blood, I made a promise to God. And this was a promise to believe in God and to follow God. The first time that I made a promise like this to begin my faith life. Before that, I did not know anything about pastors or churches or about the Bible, and all I knew what to do was to farm in the countryside. From that time up until now, I have tried to do the work of God. But I never came out from a seminary school. I never was taught or anointed by a pastor. And so... What could I possibly do? And because I did not learn these things from any books, what could I speak? What could I do? Jesus was a son of God himself. But it said, in John chapter 5, verse 17, that he could only do what he saw the Father doing. In the same way, what did I know? What could I do? And so, aside from what I have seen and heard, I have nothing else to speak about. You may all know very well that if we have a seminar that I do not try to create anything or receive an inspiration from something and create the content in that way. If God says do it, I'll do it. If He says don't do it, I won't do it. And this is how I have been doing it up until now. Now, it's not only one thing that God has told me to do. Long ago, at the time of Moses, 
he had to lead the people out from that land and go into the land of Canaan and conquer it. That is what Moses was supposed to do. But in my case, I did not really know much about the Bible, so what could I do? It is not as if I decided to go and find God or to believe in God. But I was guided by the star to be in front of God and made the promise in my blood that I would do everything for God. That is how I started my faith life. Now, in the country of South Korea, in a region called k w a c h e o n there was this tabernacle temple which was regarded as a cult by many people. And there were seven pastors there who were also known as seven angels. They all cut their wrists and stored their blood in these two jars. With that blood, they wrote down the names of all the congregation members who attended that church. Now, in my case, I had made a covenant and a promise to God in my blood, and so I also went there to have my faith life in that tabernacle temple. While I was there, there were situations, and one of the pastors there had tried to kill me. And aside from committing myself and doing volunteer works inside of the tabernacle, I did not know much else. I had received the word, and because this pastor was trying to kill me, I had no choice but to return back to my hometown. And when I returned back to my hometown, there was this new community movement, also known as a new village movement. I stayed there and for about seven years worked inside of that new village movement. One day, I went to visit my friend in Seoul, and when I went back home from the east, and inside of the many clouds that were there, Jesus had come. And the mountains, it was as if they were splitting apart. And I couldn't stare at that direction for too long. And so I fell down to the ground as though dead. And Jesus came in front of me. And he had told me several things. After that point, I went back to the place where they had tried to kill me. I had no money, no home, no place to sleep. How do you think I must have lived? And I had no food as well. For approximately three years from that time, I wandered the mountains, gathered friends that I could have, and had my faith life in that manner. This is the path of the faith life that I had. I had not studied in seminaries. I had not been anointed by pastors. And so what could I have done compared to the people who did go to seminaries and were anointed by pastors? But this is God's work. And this is Jesus' work that has to happen. And so because I had the heart to do the work, and I had the heart to obey, that is why I believe that Jesus had also chosen and could work through me as well. Everyone, you may know well. And in the year 1995, in the Suwon Gymnasium, we had established the 12 tribes after many people had gathered here. Word of mouth went around, and people came to gather here to listen. And so, what could we do? A lot of people came, and so we grew at a very large rate, at a very fast rate. 
Now it would be great if God had only given me one work to do. But aside from this that we have talked about, He also had given another work to me as well, and that is with the heavenly culture, to do this work of world peace and the restoration of light, to stop and cease the wars of this world and to establish world peace. It is not something that only happens by speaking, but it's something that happens through actions. And so I met with the presidents and leaders around the world and received a promise and a commitment from them. I had traveled the world 31 times to meet with these presidents, to receive the promise, and all of those promises are all recorded as well. These are contents that we have. And I did this work of world peace. But because of COVID-19 at this time, we are not able to do that level of activity that we had done before. What did Moses know in the past that he had given the word to the Israelites at that time? Before Moses' time, there were no words that were written down, is what we can think about. And so, aside from what he had seen and heard as God had given to him, Moses could not do anything else. In the same way, for myself too, I had not learned anything. I was not taught these words by other people. And so this is how it was in the Old Testament. And Jesus too, he said that he could only do what he sees his father doing. And he worked exactly as God had shown him. It is the same way and same situation for myself too. Other people may have studied and may speak about what they have studied. Maybe they went to a seminary school, but in my case, it was different. The only thing I could do is with what I've learned about farming. And so like Moses, like Jesus, just the things that I have seen and heard, there is nothing else that I could speak about. Now, of course, as time passed and I went into the Bible and also learned more, I'm able to speak more about the Bible. But before that point in time, it was only the things that I had seen and heard. Today, I wanted to speak and introduce myself a little bit to all of you. Now, do you all have to know me? Maybe not. But I feel as if I do not speak about all of these things, that I am not fully completing everything, my work that I have to do. And so that is why I wanted to meet with all of you pastors here, and I felt as if I had to deliver these words. In the worldly sense, I had not received anything, and I was not taught anything. But just as it says in Revelation chapter 10, just as it says in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8, I had seen all these events of Revelation. And so I can speak about what I have seen and what I have heard. So what do I know? Just the things that I have seen and heard. What I have received, eaten from these words. That is all I know. And so people who must have studied a lot in the world, people who have graduated from seminary schools, may think that I am a very ignorant person. However, it is true that I know nothing else aside from the words that are written in this book and what I have seen and heard. But many people have listened to these words, and they have come to learn these words. And so what can I do? That is how we have grown to this size today. Again, I have not learned anything of any religions out there in the world prior. But in front of the Bible, 
in front of many people. What do I do? If I just speak my words, it is my words. It is not God's word. It is God's word that I have to speak about. And so God, Jesus, and the angels have to be together in order for this word to be spoken. If they are not together with me, I have not learned anything again, and so how would I be able to speak about this Bible? But Jesus has given me this task and this duty to testify to the churches of what I have seen and heard of the events of Revelation. This is what I wanted to tell all of you. But if you do not listen to these words and accept it, then what can we do? And so Jesus had shown me all of these things and what He has revealed to me. I have to go to the churches and speak all of these words. If I don't speak it, then of course I would feel sorry. And so that is why I speak to the pastors and let them know of all of these words. This is what I truly wanted to tell all of you who are here. You are all pastors who have attended church for a long time, and you have all attended seminary for a long period of time. Again, I have not been taught all of these things in that way. All I have been given are the words of revelation, the meaning, and how it's been fulfilled. Regarding the beast, what is the beast? Who is the one riding the beast? How can this beast come out of the sea? Questions like these. Now, from chapters 1 through 22 of Revelation, all of its prophecy that has been recorded and its fulfillment, I have seen all of these things. Then in Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3, in the hand of Jesus, there are the seven stars, the seven messengers. They have sinned, and these words are recorded. But who are those seven people? I know them their names, and their faces as well. I also know the name and the faces of all of these Nicolaitans who have invaded that place. And so from Revelation chapters 1 through 22, I know all of the realities, how it is fulfilled according to these words. Everyone here, I'm sure you must have thought and wondered a lot of things about Revelation. Now, even though it has been recorded in parables inside of the Bible, its actual meaning and its reality, its fulfillment, are things that I understand. I will speak about the four Gospels a little bit. This topic is about Matthew chapter 13. It is said that Jesus had sown the seed of God inside of his field. But the enemies also sowed their seeds inside of Jesus' field. This field, it says, is the church of Jesus. And they both grow together until the time of the end, the end of the ages, or also the end of the world. And there is a time of the harvest. With the second coming of Jesus, it is said in the four Gospels that this harvest begins. Not only there, but also it is recorded in this way in Revelation. So at the time of the harvest, those who have been born of God's seed will be taken. Those who have not been born of God's seed, in other words, those who have been born of the weeds, will remain inside of that field. Then those who are harvested are born of God's seed. The weeds that are not harvested are not born of God's seed. What do you all think about this, everyone? Would you be able to answer about this topic? God and Jesus had promised these words at that time for the end of times. If all of these words were a lie, then there would be no reason to believe in Jesus and there would be no reason to have the Bible in our hands or even try to interpret it. 
Jesus had spoken these words of Matthew chapter 13 approximately 2,000 years ago. Then all of these words must fulfill, or else Jesus would be a liar and God would also be lying as well. Before Jesus came to this earth, in Jeremiah chapter 31, through the prophet Jeremiah, it was already promised that there would be a new thing, that two seeds would be sown in the same field and that a new covenant would be made. Since that time, approximately 600 years later, Jesus came to this earth. And the two seeds were sown inside of the field. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, these words are recorded. And so that prophecy that was given to the prophet Jeremiah finally accomplished and fulfilled at the time of Jesus. Jesus had sown that seed of God, and the devil's seed was also sown in that field. Both will be growing together until the time of the end, until the time of the harvest. Even in your churches, everyone, you probably have these two seeds that are there. And the reason is because the Bible does not lie. But amongst those two seeds, those who have been born of God's seed will be harvested and taken at the time of the end because Jesus sowed that seed at the time of the first coming. And those who are not born of God's seed will not be taken. When we take a look at Matthew chapter 13, from verses 37 through 39, read this content. It is all written there. Whether the people have been born of God's seed or whether they have not been born of God's seed, no matter what people may say, these words are already recorded there to testify what will happen. Isn't this correct, everyone? People may say, my church is correct, my church is a truth, my church is orthodox. But in the end, it is not about what people say. Isn't this correct, everyone? No matter how stubborn we may be, no matter how much we may do, in the end, God's word is absolute. Therefore, all of our pastors who are here now, we must truly go inside of God's Word. How does that sound, everyone? Everything that we had on ourselves, let's take all of those things off and in our bare selves, empty ourselves, let us go in front of God's Word and let us all be a new creation is what I want to say. How does it sound, everyone? I have not lied, I have not lied, is what people may say. But in the end, no matter what the intentions may be, if it is not correct according to the Bible, then it does become a lie. Therefore, let us set aside our own stubbornness. Let us set all of those things aside and let us truly go inside of God's Word. This is what I truly wanted to say. For all of our pastors, I wanted to mention that if I don't introduce myself, uh, then I am also at fault. But let us go inside of these words of revelation. Because Jesus had sent me to deliver these words of revelation to the churches. But if I don't do this, then what can I say? Who will accept me? There are places that even put on their churches that no harvesters are allowed here. I am not simply an evangelist. I am not someone who has graduated from seminary school. I am not a pastor who has been anointed by anyone else. I am simply someone who is doing the work that Jesus had entrusted to me. Aside from that, I am nothing else.
there are people that I've learned from the traditional churches. But for me, I just learned as Jesus had shown and taught me. That is all. Aside from that, there is no other person that I have really learned from. And so regarding this revelation of the New Testament, because He has allowed me to eat it and allowed me to understand it, that is how I can speak about it. I have not studied this or learned this on my own. If we have all the people of the world even take an exam on Revelation, let's say, then we will also know who understands and who doesn't. People may study all night for this Revelation exam. I am someone who has been given these words, and so even if I take a nap, I will also be able to take the exam. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it says this, that there is the messenger of Jesus who had been sent to the churches. And so at the time of the first coming of Jesus, God had sent Jesus. But what did the people do to Jesus? They said that He is the one who will receive the inheritance. So let's kill Him and let's take this vineyard for ourselves. This is the situation of this world, everyone. On the outside, these people may be leaders, but on the inside, they may actually be enemies. And so should it be in the same way today? Today, everyone, please read Revelation chapters 2 and 3 carefully. Who has the authority of judgment? Who has the iron scepter that will rule all of the nations? And who brings the food that leads to eternal life? These things are recorded very clearly. We must be pastors who are able to teach these things to our members. We should not be pastors who cannot teach these things because all of these are recorded. We must not be people who even become foolish because we do not know. But there is someone who knows the entire truth. And so now let us change our hearts, everyone. Let us have the heart that we must all understand Revelation. If there is a beast recorded in Revelation, then the reality of this beast has to appear. If there is the beast with ten horns, then the fulfillment of this must appear. In that way, from Revelation chapters 1 through 22, All the prophecies and its fulfillment, I am saying that I know these things. Therefore, we all must understand this together. At the time of the first coming of Jesus, there were many people, but God had already promised about Jesus and introduced Him, that He will be born of a virgin, that He will be born in Bethlehem, He will ride the foal of a donkey into Jerusalem, These were all events that were promised, and all of this fulfilled, and those events were shown to the people. In the same way, today, here in Revelation, there is so much content that has already been recorded. But why do people not understand? This is what we call as a spiritual blindness. I am not saying that I am a very great person who understands all of these things. But it is my role and my job and my duty to testify this to the churches because this is what Jesus had allowed me to do. And so all I have is this heart to deliver this word to all of you churches. I do not expect anything from you. I do not expect money. I do not expect you to call me as a pastor. All I have is this heart to complete this work that has been entrusted to me because what would happen if I do not do my duty? And so I ask this to all of you pastors. This revelation I have completely digested. 
digested does not mean just simply understanding. Understanding is basic, but all of its fulfillment, everything that has happened, this is what I want to deliver to all of you. This is what I want to speak about. And so everyone, truly, I ask this of all of you. What I am testifying to you, I must testify about myself and the content of this testimony is the content of the book of Revelation. There is no one in this world who will say anything bad of me if I don't speak at all. But I have a duty that has been given to me. I must think of the work of God and the work of Jesus, and I must testify what I have been given. Up until now, we may have thought that we knew content with the little that we knew. In Matthew chapter 24, in Jerusalem, that is the temple of God, what happened to the people there? Due to acts of lawlessness, lawlessness had increased. It was not righteousness that was flourishing. And so this is how the abomination that causes desolation, it says, will also be standing in this holy place. We must think about these words. Of course, for the entire world, but we also have to think about ourselves as well. And so that is why today, we must not just think of this very simply. My heart is to tell you everything about what I have seen and heard. All of you, all of you pastors, do you fully understand and have you digested revelation? If you say yes to this, then actually that is not true. In Revelation, it says that you should not add to or subtract from these words or that you would not be able to enter into heaven. And so it would not be the truth to say that we would all be able to enter into heaven in this way. Not anyone deserves to enter into heaven. All I want to do is deliver what is the truth. It says in Revelation that you would not be able to add or subtract and then be able to enter into heaven. Jesus is not lying about this. And if I speak these words, of course there will be people that will misunderstand and speak about it differently. But in the Bible, there is a purpose and a will of God. In other words, there are people who will be satisfied with the time of the first coming of Jesus. But at the time of the second coming, one era will disappear. And it's to create a new era during this time. In order for us to receive salvation, in order to avoid the lake of burning sulfur, we all must have a new heart and we must change ourselves. If we do not, and we stay within our own will and our stubbornness, then that would not be correct. And so everyone, we must think of these words well. I have gone around the world 31 times, and I have not talked about the Bible during all of those times. And the reason for this is not because I do not know what to speak about with the Bible, but it's because the people do not have ears to hear. How could I be able to speak the Bible in its entirety? But there is a time when I did speak. Because this person had said that there is no one in this world who understands the Bible more than himself. In that particular location. There were pastors from all different parts around the world. And there was a challenge. And so that is why I had spoken about Matthew chapter 24 there. 
Matthew chapter 23, that preceding chapter were the events of that current time. And Matthew chapter 24 is about the signs of the end of the ages. And so I said, I will explain this chapter. I will speak with the Bible that is inside of my heart. Verse by verse, I will go through it. And if there is anything wrong, then please correct me. And I spoke about the chapter verse by verse. This chapter, Matthew chapter 24, was prophesied by Jesus 2,000 years ago. And I said that the fulfillment of this has already happened today. And I've seen all of these things. How about yourself? Have you seen it? And so I said, think about the time that we are living in right now. Do not be someone who is arrogant. And I said that you must be born again if you do not want to enter into the lake of burning sulfur. I have digested these words, and I have not gone around the world speaking about these words for all the 31 times that I have traveled. But there is that one particular time when I did open up all of these words. According to the will of God and the will of Jesus, we must understand this new covenant and we must teach the words of this new covenant to all of our congregation members. If we do not, then that is upon us. Truly, to all of our pastors, I want to speak about Revelation chapters 1 through 22, everything that I have seen and heard. Therefore, please, if you all want this, then at a time together, I will explain all of these things to you. More than what Moses had seen in the Old Testament times, I have seen many more things because I am able to understand this revelation. And these words are true. Who is the 666? And who are the people who receive this 666 mark of the beast? Who did they worship? These are all events that I have seen. Where will you be able to find a more exact testimony of these things? And so everyone, if you decide a time together, then I will explain all of these things to you. I hope that we will have a time like this together. Pastors, everyone, please stay safe and healthy. And you have worked diligently until now. And so I pray that we will continue to work diligently. And for God and for Jesus and for ourselves, let us fully understand all of these words so that we may also teach it as well. I will conclude here today. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the word. Chairman Lee has never attended seminary, but testifies the open book of Revelation that he received. Many people claim that Jesus gave them understanding of the Bible, but the only way to verify this is through the Bible itself. Who are the seven heads and ten horns? Who are the seven stars? What is the harvest? And who are those who are harvested and who are not? Through our studies, you'll be able to hear the in-depth answers to these questions. Truly, the Holy Spirit is at work today so that all believers can understand the entire Bible free of cost and without man's interpretation. Why not give it a try? Click our link to sign up for our study and check the second part of our series on our YouTube channel to hear more and get some of your Bible questions answered today. Thank you for watching and God bless. Are you curious about the book of Revelation? Do you have questions about the end of the age? New Heaven, New Earth presents The Book of Revelation, a detailed chapter-by-chapter -chapter explanation beginning October 18th.